Welcome to this first edition of Reality Check. Insight, analysis, and comment brought to you by AJC. Up top, comment on the news. Yemen has been thrust into the public eye as the latest front in the war on Islamist terror. In the face of the country's conflicts, some members of Yemen's minuscule Jewish community have fled to safety in the U.S. and Israel. Those Jews who remain are trying to lead normal lives as best they can, mindful that for the Islamists, their very presence in a Muslim country is intolerable. In Iran, the regime is mired in power struggles. One man touted as a possible alternative to President Ahmadinejad is Ali Laranjani, the current parliament speaker. But is Laranjani the pragmatist some believe him to be? He's called for demonstrators to face maximum punishment, declared that it's an honor to support Hamas, and defended Holocaust denial before a stunned audience at the Munich Security Conference. Same tune, different politician. Jewish relief groups have mobilized following the devastating earthquake in Haiti, which has left thousands of people dead. Israeli relief organization Israaid, a long-standing partner of AJC in responding to humanitarian crises around the world, is deploying medical personnel and sending medical supplies. This edition's feature story, Rules of Engagement. One year ago, Israel's army entered Gaza with a clear message for the ordinary citizens living there. You, the citizens of Gaza, are not our enemies. Hamas, Jihad, and the other terrorist organizations are your enemies as they are our enemies. As much as any army in the world, the IDF has wrestled with the fundamental questions of modern warfare. How do you protect innocent lives when you are fighting an enemy that hides among civilians? An enemy that doesn't wear a uniform? An enemy that uses hospitals and mosques to store weapons? These questions face Israeli soldiers in Gaza and American, British and Allied forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is a new kind of war. We try to do our best not to harm civilians. There were tens of thousands of cell phone calls quarter of a million leaflets that were thrown from airplanes to warn the population in Gaza and to leave the places where we knew that the Hamas is using human shields and hiding in mosques, hospitals, kindergarten. For an army to keep its moral backbone when locked in deadly combat is no easy task. As the former commander of British troops in Afghanistan stated, Israel's behavior was exemplary. I don't think there has ever been a time in the history of warfare when any army has made more efforts to reduce civilian casualties and deaths of innocent people than the IDF is doing today in Gaza. But the Israeli leaders you see here would have faced arrest on war crimes charges had they travelled to London in the wake of the Gaza conflict. Exploiting a loophole in British law, which the British government has since vowed to close down, Pro-Palestinian campaigners, supported by Hamas, have waged a relentless campaign to drag Israelis into court. So here's this edition's reality check. Israel's leaders shouldn't be vilified for war crimes, but praised for showing the world how to fight a just war with just means. Here's this edition's comment on the platform. The reverberations of Flight 253 are still with us as we Thank goodness that uh, a terrible tragedy in midair was averted. But it was averted because of the courage of people on the plane, and too many signals were missed. Of course, as many people say, you can't stop everything, but this one could have been stopped. There were so many signs, there were so many things that weren't connected. So for my Huffington Post blog, I decided to write about Israeli airport security to suggest what it is that we can learn as a country from Israel, which has a pretty good record on security when it comes to airports and airplanes. So I was struck by some of the comments in response. Firstly, those who say, no, there's nothing we can learn from Israel because Israel is, is, is toxic. We can't touch it. Well, that's absurd. It's also absurd because American lives are at stake. We have a lot to learn. And secondly, there were those who said, if Israel didn't exist, Flight 253 would never have happened, nor would 9-11. Well, that's equally absurd. This is not a war about Israel. This is a war about the West, Western values, the United States. The threat we face of jihadist terrorism is a threat that challenges America and Western values. Israel is our friend. 
That's the point I'm going to continue to make, and those comments only reinforce my determination. Israel stands with us. We have a lot to learn from Israel. Israel has a lot to learn from us. But above all, we better remember who our friends and allies are in this war against all of us. Here's what we found on the net. Tenacious Media Watchdog Honest Reporting has published its Dishonest Reporting Awards for 2009. As well as the usual suspects, there are some surprises. Read it in full at honestreporting.com. If Iran's nuclear ambitions leave you feeling powerless, United Against Nuclear Iran can help. Visit uani.com and click on the Iran Business Registry to find out more. And a reminder that AJC and Israel are continuing their long-standing partnership, this time in Haiti. If you want to help the earthquake victims, visit ajc.org forward slash Haiti Fund. You've been watching Reality Check.